This video is sponsored by Case Filters. Capture with confidence. Click on the link in the description below and use the code Alistair for a 5% discount. Hi, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Express Photography. In this week's video, I want to talk about a button in Lightroom that I would strongly suggest you shouldn't touch ever. Um, and I'm not just gonna make these bold statements and just preach at you. That's the last thing I ever want to do to anybody. But what I wanna do is take a common sense approach to why it is you take photographs in the first place, what you're trying to achieve, and what, if any, use this particular button would be to you. Before we get into that, I'd like to use an analogy, which is you get up on a Sunday morning and you decide that it's such a beautiful day, you're going to jump in your car and drive out into the countryside and just explore, just see where you end up. And who knows, you might end up in a beautiful little place that you've never been to before. So you jump into your car and you bring up the GPS and you hit auto. Uh, would you ever do that? Is it going to achieve for you what it's going to do? Because as soon as you uh, say to your GPS, okay, it's up to you, you decide, then of course you're going to let the GPS take you where it wants to go or maybe even where it thinks you want to go. Now, where I want to go and where my GPS want to take me are completely different things. I might want to head up into the mountains and end up in a quiet wooded valley with a beautiful river running through it with lots of soft atmosphere and beautiful gentle light, whereas my GPS decides it's time for me to go to the supermarket and stop up on whole grain biscuits. Of course, what I'm talking about here is the auto button in Lightroom. I've seen numerous videos by some fairly prominent photographers talking about the value of the auto button. Uh, and I've heard so many arguments from people over the years, basically along the lines of, well, it's a great place to start. And when you don't know where you want to go, hitting that auto button can give you some ideas and all of that type of thing. Now, that's all well and good. And if that's the road you want to go down, then I'm not convinced the Expressive Photography YouTube channel is a good home for you. Because all the auto button is doing is making some assumptions. And if we start to look at some of these screenshots of results of hitting the auto button, you'll begin to see that there's a common trend. We have a slight exposure change. We have dramatic highlight reduction and shadow increase, uh, changes to white points and black points, and increases to vibrance. If I skip to the next one, you will see a similar thing. Slight exposure change, big reduction in highlights, increase in shadows, changes to white points and black points, and again, a vibrance increase. And finally, with this third example, not much of an exposure change, but highlight shadow adjustments, prominent white and black point adjustments, and again, an increase in vibrance. Now this was three different images, very different light conditions, very different exposures, very different uh, atmospheric conditions. And ultimately what's happened here is that the auto button has achieved a very similar effect. It's killing highlights, opening shadows, adding vibrance, and generally increasing contrast. I think here we have plus six contrast, plus six contrast, plus four contrast. Now they're kind of small adjustments, but I have had other examples where we've had plus 20, plus 30 in contrast. So what's the point? Yeah, you know, if you want, I mean, I've spoken to thousands of photographers over the years from amateurs all the way up to full-time professionals, and one of the most common answers I get to the question, why do you want to make photographs? The answer is often to express my own creativity. Now, if you hit the auto button in Lightroom, you're no longer expressing your creativity. You're asking the computer to make a good guess at what it thinks might be a good result for this particular image. So what I want to do in this video is just look at a couple of examples and some of the problems that Lightroom created for me. So this is a raw file uh, taken in the Yellow Mountains of China, a uh, beautiful sunrise, and you can see, you know, it's exposed for the highlights, which is a typical thing to do uh, in uh, any digital photography. So if I look at that, there's a tiny little bit of clipping. Now, 
I have various ways I could process this image creatively and expressively to tell the story that I want to say. You know, there's some beautiful atmosphere in the distance there, the light is very soft, and I think the silhouette is very, very striking. If I come and hit the auto button, it has made a very similar adjustment to the ones I showed you in the earlier screenshots. Killing highlights, opening shadows, uh, small adjustments to black and white points, but it's adding vibrance again. Now, one of the biggest problems that this adjustment has made is it's created halos. You can see these halos around the, the horizon line there where the shadows and the more highlighted midtone areas are meeting, causing halos. One of my old mantras with processing is never cause a problem you have to spend time correcting. I would rather gently progress in a more creative and free feel type of direction than have to make a dramatic adjustment like this and then start saying, oh, well, I'm going to have to start adjusting this to get rid of a halo and then come in and correct the black point again. All of that type of thing. I've just had to make three or four changes to undo the automatic changes that Lightroom suggested. If we look at this next image here, typical seascape scene. This is from the north coast of Spain. Um, this is a, 90, uh, 100 and, uh, 181 second exposure, so a three minute exposure. Uh, and this was using a 10 stop case ND filter and their circular polarizer. And again, if I hit auto, it actually makes uh, a very curious adjustment, whereas it makes everything darker. It's clipped the blacks, it's killed my highlights, uh, and it's added vibrance again. So if I click reset, I actually prefer the start point of this image than the one that the auto button did for me. Now, if I just keep showing you examples of hitting the auto button, eventually I'm going to hit that auto button and the result is actually going to be pleasing to me or it may give me an idea for a future direction. But I can tell you that before recording this video, I spent a couple of hours hitting the auto button on a whole selection of different images, and maybe a couple of times it was, okay, yeah, that's not too bad. But many, many times what I noticed was that it's doing adjustments that I'm then having to spend time undoing. Here at Expressive Photography, I do strongly believe the main benefit of uh, being a landscape photographer, spending time in the landscape, spending time developing craft and skill and feel and uh, to articulate and express uh, our feelings, emotions, and just the love of being in the landscape involves a little bit of time. It involves trial and error. It involves practice. But the bottom line is that I want to be able to make these changes myself and understand that by moving these sliders, the feel of the image changes. The only benefit of hitting the auto button is this theoretical gain, which in many, many cases doesn't prove to be true. I don't want my GPS taking me to the supermarket when I want to go to the park. So we can see with just those two examples there that I've showed you that the auto button isn't actually helping you. This idea that if you hit the auto button, it's a good starting point for your photography, for your development, for your processing, is a myth. And here at Expressive Photography, I just think it's really important that we use common sense and ask the question, why? If that is, becomes your main question of why am I doing this? Why am I hitting this button? Is it because I've just been told to by an influencer or because I truly believe that the benefits are there for to do it? Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this little poke at the uh, societal norms that are out there. Um, I do believe that creativity is something that comes from within and immediately handing the image over to the computer to make these random adjustments is the complete opposite of what I actually want to try and do with my photography. I want to use the elements that are in the frame to build a relationship to create an image that I believe is somehow expressive of my relationship with the landscape and what I want to say about it. 
Of course, uh, we cannot survive on this channel without your support. So please hit the subscribe button. Dive into the comments. Do you use the uh, auto button? Are there any other things that you habitually use that you realize now that you might actually not be gaining from? Come in, let's have a discussion about this and uh, hopefully you will get some benefit from expressive photography. I'm Alistair Ben. You've been watching me babble away for 10 minutes and I hope it's been of value to you. Take care. Bye for now.